Right, so tomorrow is 1st of September and uh, I think from 1st of September onwards your serious, uh, you know, studies towards uh, the net exam should start. So the net exam is on 17 December and so you have roughly about uh, three, and three, three and a half months to prepare for the exam. Okay, so now I'll make, like a lot of you have requested for gate uh, strategy as well. So I'll be making that after the uh, net exam because uh, you will have about two months for the gate exam as well. And almost 80% of the syllabus is common, right? There's some 20% extra that you need to pay attention uh, to gate. So anyway, starting with this, I won't give you on uh, this video not, will not be about how to attempt the paper that I'll discuss in detail when you know when exam is in like a week or two weeks before the exam I'll discuss that but right now I'll tell you the strategy on how to prepare like from 1st of September like I said that's that is tomorrow today is 31st and uh, so how should you go about how should you you know uh, assign the topics okay so first of all inorganic chemistry is a must for everybody like I have been insisting for quite a while now. Inorganic is a must for everybody because this is your make or break subject. Organic physical, it's good if you have a specialization in that but inorganic you need to score really, you need to do it really well, okay? And it's not that tough, it's very easy, it's very scoring and it takes a hell, I mean uh, if you compare it to the other, uh, other subjects that's organic and physical, it takes uh, really less time to solve the questions from inorganic chemistry, okay? And if you are looking for uh, looking for uh, you know what, what all topics you need to cover so i've already made a video on that and i think uh, right now you can see a link somewhere here and uh, you will get the link and you can click on that okay so for inorganic subjects what you need to do is first of all you need to target uh, close to 70 marks from inorganic chemistry itself close to 70 marks you need to ta target from inorganic chemistry and if you try and uh, Try and uh, I try and make the 70 into uh, basically if you try and uh, uh, you know uh, divide this uh, 70 so at least from four markers you need to do it, uh, approximately I would say around from 20 questions you can easily manage around uh, 13 questions you can manage okay 13 questions out of 20 from inorganic and that will fetch you about 52 marks okay this will fetch you 52 marks and the rest uh, 28, uh, 28 or 18, 18 that is the 18 marks you can fetch from 2 markers and 2 markers you will have roughly about 14 to 13 questions from 2 markers ok so if you can do even 8 to 9 questions ok that will fetch you again a 16 to 18 marks so you have scored close to 68 ok 68 marks from inorganic ok then from a specialization subject even if you score around 40 you are good to uh, you know clear the exam okay so how you need to prepare is from 1st September onwards you pick topics okay I have mentioned all the topics in the videos for organic I have made all these all the uh, I have like mentioned all the topics in all the three subjects physical organic and organic so in organic is a must physical and organic you have a choice to do from physical or organic okay and the second part the second thing I want to state is that if you are for example your specialization is physical okay so it does not mean you just leave leave out organic okay so there are certain topics in organic which are routinely coming in every exam so you should do them and they are pretty easy for example you can do all these spectroscopic techniques you can do uv you can do ir you can do nmr nmr you know you should do you should do this structural elucidation okay even mass you you can do because sometimes mass also questions from mass also come for four markers okay then ir you special specifically need to concentrate on the carbonyl stretching and bending frequency and also the uh, uh, you know C, CH, CH frequency for C triple point C for C, uh, for sp2 hybridized carbon for sp3 hybridized carbon okay so these are so spectroscopy you need to do well in organic and in uh, in UV spectroscopy you need to you know uh, see what is the effect of uh, solvent on the transitions okay whether they are whether it leads to a bathochromic shift or a hypsochromic shift so these are a few things you need to uh, you know uh, pay attention to uh, when you are uh, when you are like uh, doing some organic topics and what else you can do in organic is you can do stereochemistry like RNS configuration that is very basic confirmations of cyclohexane so these topics are very basic and as a chemist you should know okay irrespective of what your specialization is similarly in physical also there are certain topics which are very scoring and you should you should even if you are preparing for organics there are certain topics from physical you should do really well like solid state 
okay you can do even if you are not from a physical background do not have a strong maths background you can leave out quantum but you can do uh, you know you can do um, like i said you can do solid state you can do group theory group theory is is, is uh, relatively simple for uh, organic chemist okay then um, kinetics basic formulas you can revise thermodynamics also basic formulas you can revise okay electrochemistry you can leave out because it's not a very very it's not it does not carry a lot of weightage and uh, so okay so so as an organic chemist you can do physical you can do certain topics from physical chemistry you can do epr spectroscopy okay electro electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy okay because every time a four marker def definitely comes from epr spectroscopy and uh, what else you can do in physical is you can just learn the basic formulas for polymers what is a polydispersity index what is weight average molar mass number average molar mass z average molar mass viscosity average molar mass i am not saying to study them i am just saying to learn the formulas okay because physical is all about formulas though like you know certain questions are just directly based on the formula so it's very easy to understand from that uh, and in physical spe physical you can do physical spectroscopy that also carries a lot of weightage when you're doing physical so anyway so inorganic is there then you can do physical and organic which whatever you choose but there are certain topics from both these subjects that are very necessary that is indeed very necessary for you to be able to do okay uh, just let me check for the video yeah okay so now uh, coming on to the preparation so you start from 1st september okay and you have three months you are starting from 1st september you have three months okay so what i say is pick out topics okay first of all make a list of all the topics that you are wanting to do from all three subjects okay you make a list of all the topics okay then what you do is first of all give your major major time to inorganic because if you are doing a, if you have if you are, if you have a specialization then you definitely are practicing questions from specialization a lot so you need to pay more attention to the inorganic part and uh, if you are for example doing your msc right now and you are preparing for this then you should at least give 3 hours daily and for those of you who have dropped out or who are preparing or who are doing jobs or whatever uh, even for them it's 3 hours and for them or and for, for those who are totally dedicated to doing csi net they can give anywhere any anywhere to 6 to 8 hours i think that is good enough if you prepare for 3 months thoroughly uh, 5 to 6 hours daily is is more than enough to crack the exam okay anyway so first september onwards pick out topics give one or two days according to what uh, according to the uh, you know the the content that the topic carries okay so you give one and two days and then what you do is on the third day when you finished one topic you do uh, questions from that topic okay from which have come in gate or which have come in csir okay so you pick that topic you do that topic really well and then you take questions from the previous year papers and try and solve them okay and definitely first time you won't be able to solve all of them you'll have doubts you'll have to refer again and again so you'll have a little but you'll have a little idea and you'll gain a little confidence then you do others other topics okay i'm not telling you to do all the questions like pick out some okay then the next topic then the next topic similarly if you do five topics then after you've done five topics then you pick out questions from all those five topics and try and attempt it okay then you do the sixth topic similarly you do 10 topics then once you've completed 10 topics then do questions from all those 10 topics you know mixed questions so that way you will start building up your uh, capacity to do questions from different different fields okay and that's how you start to gradually uh, you know uh, understand and uh, you know how and how to attempt the questions so doing questions is very important so after you finish a topic see theory, doing theory is fine okay it's good for your msc exams and everything but when you're coming on to entrance exams the practice of questions also matters a lot you know you need to apply that uh, thing that you've studied for in the questions okay and uh, that's how only, that's how only you will be able to crack the exam because i know a lot of people who do a lot of theory and they actually know a lot of lot of they have a lot of uh, you know their concepts are clear they have a lot of knowledge uh, so they are not lacking knowledge but because they do not have the practice of questions you know they cannot apply that theory in the uh, in the questions and they are not able to solve it okay so it's very important to solve the questions i i stress that a lot okay so like that you take three months until 1st of december by 31st uh, by 30th november you complete all the topics okay along with a few questions from each topic like i have mentioned so first you do one topic then you do questions some questions from that 
then second topics some questions from that then when you do five topics then all the combined questions from all the five topics similarly when you move to 10th topic then all the questions from all the 10 topics that's that's how you gradually increase your uh, the capacity to do questions once you have once i am trying to make your schedule the 30th of november okay so once you have finished all the topics and you have revised and all your doubts have been sorted then from 1st december to the 1st december so the exam is on 15 december so from 1st december to 15 december you only have to do questions only questions no theory only questions is what is required so for 15 days you build up you do as many questions six hours you have you do 100 questions okay the you do questions that's all you and you know whatever discuss it with your friends you know uh, you know just go go deep into the questions understand everything and one important thing okay so when you are doing questions yeah this worked out for me and this is a, a very uh, valuable thing that i'm going to tell you according to me at least because that's what helped me crack the exam okay so when you are uh, you know when you are uh, doing a question for example you did a question from a certain topic okay say for example uh, what do i call mm -hmm. Okay, you did a question from a reagent. Okay, you did an organic reagent. Okay, and what what happened was you did the question, you got the question right. Okay, but try and look at the what the other reagents are gonna do. So there are some questions in organic chemistry, for example, where they'll give you a, a organic molecule and they'll say which is the most appropriate re reagent to carry out this transformation, and they'll be given four options. Okay, so you you got the answer correct. Okay, but you should know what all the other three options which were wrong, why were they wrong and in which case will they be the appropriate reagents. So that is very important for you to know. So it goes for all subjects, not just organic, physical or inorganic. When you are doing a question and you see four options, you should know the meaning and where the all the rest of the options will fit which are not fitting in that particular question. So for example, if there is a question on hemoglobin, right? And there's something to do with uh, what does he, what is the role of myoglobin or myoglobin or what is the role of hemoglobin? And there'll be four options given. So like electron transfer, like transfer of protein, storage of protein. So if for example hemoglobin you are uh, for myoglobin you are saying myoglobin is storage of protein, right? But then you should know what which which protein is responsible for electron transfer if there is one if there's an option where it says electron transfer, okay? So which which protein is responsible for you know what what whatever options are there you should be knowing the meaning of each and every option so that is how the that is how you can prepare for the exam and that 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 is the way to analyze a question okay so you should know what the options also mean and when that option will be a correct option okay because sometimes what happens the people say that questions are unrepeated. repeated questions are unrepeated but the concept is the same so if, if in one question they ask about myoglobin in the other one they ask about cytochromes okay so if you have studied the options you will know cytochromes are responsible for electron transfer so you know stuff like this is how it helps you build your uh, build your knowledge and you know this is a way to do a previous year question okay not just solving it but actually knowing what the options also mean okay and uh, just a second right so i think uh, this is good enough so from 1st to 15th you do do the questions and uh, from 1st to 30th you do all the theory but a few questions you have to do on every topic okay so Till here you, you have the time to do all the theor theoretical part along with a few questions because the questions will actually help you you know understand that where you are lagging or where you where do you think you still have a doubt in that topic and once you are done with everything then from 1st to 15th you only practice questions every question like from gate, net, jam now I don't understand why but certain students you know don't uh, even go through the papers for jam and that is not at all correct because there are a lot of questions, there are a lot of concepts which actually are uh, they are in JAM which have been applied to GATE or NET. Okay, for example, there was this question where uh, a, 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 a ketone was given. Okay, now a ketone is generally responsible for uh, if if you add metachloro perbenzoic acid. Okay, metachloro perbenzoic acid. So it's a peroxy acid. Now what MCPBA generally does is it leads to epoxide, okay. But in the in the IIT paper they had given a question where they had used MCPBA and a 
and there was a ketone so what people what students did was they made a epoxide okay and they made a epoxide and then they proceeded with the question and they got the answer wrong because uh, the mcpba actually only leads to epoxidation when there is on a double bond on a alkene okay but when there is a ketone present uh, it leads to bare vinegar oxidation now if you if you have studied the mechanism for bare vinegar oxidation it's a ketone and then you have a peroxy acid and when these two are present then it leads to the formation of lactone so that's bare vinegar oxidation so if you have done this question from iid the next the next example for example the iid jam 2016 paper had this question okay so iid jam happens in 2000 uh, happens in february and the same year in june in in the net net exam same question came okay so this is how everything is related so don't think jam is of a lower level it's of bsc level so you won't do questions from that it is good for practice and like i said practice as many questions as possible so once you finish with gate and uh, net questions then you come on to the uh, you know you come on to the uh, questions from jam okay so it's very important to practice questions like these so i think this is good enough so you practice every topic and then questions questions and questions i'll state it again and again it's all about questions top theory is good but questions is the must okay so this is what uh, is going to set you apart from rest of the aspirants so you should do lot of questions okay so anyway that was my motive and in the next uh, you know in the next uh, whenever like during one month before or 15 20 days before the exam i'll make a full fledged video on how to attempt questions okay on how to choose uh, when to stop you know how to know whether this question has to be marked correctly or not if you are in doubt whether to go for the question or not because some like i'll just mention a part of it because there are some students who what happens is for example they are scoring around 90 okay you you eva evaluate your score and you think you are scoring about 90 and they leave the exam at i mean they do not attempt the questions at uh, if, if they are scoring 90 and i do not understand the the psychology behind it because if you are getting 90 you are not even close to qualifying the exam okay so what's the point of sticking to 90 as uh, you know you might as well just uh, attempt you know do random attempts and try and at least come to till 110 at least at attempt 120 130 so that you have a good chance of qualifying the rf you are attempting questions for 90 and 100 marks i mean it makes no sense at all to attempt questions for just 90 and 100 marks okay i mean what are you trying to prove there is nothing to prove you, you are not going to qualify nobody is going to ask you you know by how many how many marks did you miss the exam nobody cares about that okay so always try and attempt at least 130 marks so that you have a good chance of qualifying attempting 110 100 marks it's 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 very risky because it's 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 uh, very difficult for even a person who is very knowledgeable to get if he's attempting 110 to get 110 or 110 it's very tough so you should attempt 130 on a safer side so as to if you even if you get three four questions as a negative you are still scoring a 110 so don't come don't uh, you know don't uh, come back from the exam scoring a 110 or a 100 uh, you know attempting 110 100 or a 100 attempt at least uh, 130 marks of the paper of around 200 okay so anyway so all the best to so start preparing and uh, uh, you know keep following my videos and please like and subscribe thank you